Hi, builders. My name is Paul. About 15 years ago, I joined Palantir as one of our forward deployed engineers and have worked across our U.S. government and commercial customers. More recently, I've been on the product side, which is why I'm excited to show you something new today. It's part of AIP. It's aimed towards builders and application developers, and its goal is to help you get started building LLM-powered workflows in just a few minutes. Let's take a look. Today, we'll play the role of a developer, and we want to build a document search application that'll help the people in our business better search their documents. So in this case, the business we're working on is a bicycle repair company. Um, and so, yeah, let's take a look at IP. Um, we're here on the landing page, and we can see very quickly there's a prominent build with AIP section that helps us get started. So let's click into that and see what we find. Um, so one of the things we'll notice right away is that from day one, AIP is shipping with dozens of example implementations that make it easy for developers like me to build quickly and to learn how AIP works. So looking at this page, we'll see AI starter kits for common AI powered applications. We'll see examples of complex data engineering and data pipelines, applications that we can build and other front end analytics, visualizations, things like that. Um, but scrolling to the top, uh, it actually turns out this first AI starter kit um, called Semantic Search feels like it's in the ballpark of what we need. Uh, it'll help us build a document search application. So let's click into that and see what we get. Okay, so one of the things I notice right away is that these examples are actually incredibly rich. So uh, looking at the Semantic Search example, we get four screenshots at the top that cover the front end application we're about to install and also under the hood, the data pipelines and semantic search logic um, that's included. Scrolling down, we get a pretty detailed description of how this application um, and overall feature works under the hood. And one of the things I'll call out is that um, AIP out of the box supports a range of commercially available and also open source language models. Um, so I can get started quickly building this application, but also because of the extensibility and openness of AIP, I'm not boxed in as a developer. Um, and then the last thing I notice here is that these aren't just front-end demos. They're not toy implementations. This is a true end-to-end -end reference. So we get everything from sample data to uh, data integration pipeline with the semantic transforms we need. Um, we get an actual ontology uh, built for the semantic search workflow, and we get a front-end application um, that'll teach us how this feature works and also give us a starting place that we can like, reverse engineer for the application I want to build. So this seems great. Um, why don't I scroll back to the top and click the install button. And it looks like we'll just wait a few seconds uh, to get this example started. Okay, uh, let's take a look at our example that just installed. All right, right away I see we have a on-screen modal that again summarizes how this application works. Looks like it's taking the uh, original AIP showcase um, example information and bringing it to the app, which is helpful. Um, once I get into the app proper, it looks like there are two tabs here. So the first one's called example and should teach us how semantic search works, give us a reference implementation. Um, the second one is a very detailed tutorial. Why don't we come back to that in a minute? Okay, so on the example, um, I see we're looking at some notional data of car manufacturing issues and we can ask questions of those documents. So I can ask a question about like high temperature issues and see pretty quickly the semantic search here is going to match on uh, semantically similar terms. So high temperatures don't literally appear in the PDFs that are matched, but um, similar phrases like overheating do. Um, on the right hand side, uh, and this is actually the thing I'm most excited about, uh, it looks like the semantic search chunks that matched are passed into a RAG workflow. Um, and so uh, we have an LLM here using these chunks to generate a even better response than just the individual snippets of the documents. So um, cool. Yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, I think I can build my bike repair shop uh, application on top of this. Let's actually go and try and ask a question about repairing bikes. And I'm there. So looking at this, I can see immediately the semantic search does the best job it can to pull back relevant chunks from the car uh, PDFs, but there's nothing in this data that's really about bikes. 
Um, one of the nice things about the LLM response, though, is that it's aware of this. So a benefit of building LLM-powered workflows on top of AIP is that you can actually focus the context that's passed to the LLM to just be your business data. And because of that, you can reduce hallucinations and make sure your LLM generator responses are super honed in on just the relevant information that you have as your business. Um, great. Okay. Well, I think from here, I want to see if I can modify this application uh, and the data that goes into it to be my data from my bike repair shop. So let's look at the tutorial and figure out how that works. Okay, so we have a four to five step tutorial here that walks us through how to actually get data in and do a few other things. Let's start by looking at connecting the data. Okay, looks like we can use this media set that's linked. So opening this up, we'll actually see the six PDFs that we were searching uh, through in the example application, all of which contain car manufacturing issue data. Um, I have a folder of some PDFs on my desktop. So if we drag those in and click upload, uh, okay, already done. Uh, we can get that data in and see how this works on top of our business's data. Um, down the line, we probably swap out this drag and drop PDF integration for a connection to a database or something a little more first class. Um, I know enough about semantic search to know that uh, just importing PDFs probably isn't enough to do all the processing, text extraction, chunking that we need for this to actually show up in our search application. So I'm hoping the rest of the tutorial covers this too. Reading on to step two, we can see that, okay, there's a product called Pipeline Builder. And within it, I can actually do this kind of text extraction and uh, chunking and uh, embedding generation. So let's open that up and see if it walks us through how this works. Nice, okay. Uh, it looks like the left-hand side of this graph that appeared contains the raw data that we were just manipulating. So if I click in on the bottom, I get a pretty helpful preview. Um, I can actually open up one of the bike PDFs that I just imported and see that it's instantly available here. That's pretty cool. Um, moving on, we can see, okay, we convert the PDFs into rows of data. We do some sort of text extraction or OCRing, which is pretty helpful. And then we get to the step that I'm most interested in, which is how does AIP apply chunking? And is it easy for me to adjust that kind of strategy? So clicking the edit button, um, one of the things I can see that I really like is these examples are incredibly well documented, even when we go to granular steps. So um, here we can actually see that the chunking process is explained in detail. And it looks like it's configured in this pretty self-documented uh, card. So some of the things that are interesting here is the example uh, ships with a pretty basic chunking strategy that I don't think we would ever use in uh, production. If I look at the example chunks that are created at the bottom, we can see that this text is kind of arbitrarily broken up um, into chunks of about 256 characters. Um, our documents actually are formatted in a somewhat standard way. So I'm gonna take a look to refresh my memory on what the format is. Okay, cool. Uh, prevention, okay, there's a couple section headers. And then I'll go back and let's see if we actually implement uh, a slightly different chunking approach that takes that standard format of our documents into account. So if you bear with me for a second, I can type all this in. Okay, cool. And then we can click apply to apply our new chunking strategy. Um, and pretty instantly see the results on the bottom of the screen. So it looks like we're on the right track. Um, the actual text chunks here begin at the paragraphs and the sections of our document. So this should mean when I run a semantic search in my application, I actually get back the full block of text that's most relevant to my search. Um, that's great. Um, if I step back, I can save my changes here and actually do a deploy. Um, and then we can take a look to see if this actually shows up in the application. Our build just finished. So if we wired this up correctly, the PDFs we uploaded and processed and the semantic search changes we made should show up in our app. Let's head back and take a look. Um, all right, so we'll pause the tutorial. We'll go to the example tab and we can rerun that exact search for bicycle brake pads. Um, nice, okay, right away I see um, the semantic search is returning relevant chunks from our PDFs um, on bicycle manufacturing issues. Looks like the LLM is still thinking. Um, 
Cool. And okay, nice. Uh, and we can also see those chunks were successfully passed to the LLM. So the response that we get on the right hand side of the screen is factoring in our business data. Um, that's pretty incredible um, because it means in just a few minutes, we went from installing an example in the AIP showcase to deeply understanding not only how the feature worked to a user, but how it was configured under the hood and then bringing our own data and our own chunking strategy to bear on that in just a few minutes. Um, if I head back to the tutorial, I could keep going. It looks like I can configure the ontology, maybe link up this PDF data set that we've just uploaded to other data from my business. Um, I could also actually edit this application that we've been using as a tutorial and build on top of it to customize the, the interface and the features here. Um, or I could even write TypeScript code to really customize how this entire semantic search logic works. But I feel good about where we got for now, so why don't we call it there? Thanks for watching and figuring out how to build the semantic search workflow with me. We're excited to see what you build with AIP.